Hey everybody, welcome to another iClone Basics tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the timeline, the most important command center of your entire project. Uh, the timeline is essentially what controls everything in your scene. So without wasting any time, let's go into our props and add an object into our scene because we first need an object to manipulate in the timeline. So we'll go to our set tab up here, into our props, into 3D blocks. I'm going to add in our good old box 001 right here. I'll just double click that. Now to bring up our timeline, we can actually go down here and press this button to uh, show our timeline, or we can simply press the F hotkey to toggle it on and off. That's probably the most important hotkey you'll ever learn is the F3 hotkey to bring up your timeline. Now you can see right now in my timeline, uh, we can actually you know shrink it or expand it just like any other uh, window uh, that you would like. Uh, in my timeline, you can see I have this box 001 selected. Now that's because I have this object related track selected and that means anything that I have selected will appear in my timeline. If I don't have that selected and I go off here and I close down my uh, box 001 track, I can also select it from my track menu list right here and open it up. But generally 99% of the time you're going to be opening your timeline because of the last object you selected. So I like to just keep this on, this object related track, just always keep it on. It's gen generally good practice. All right, so we have this uh, box in our scene. The first thing I want to do is animate it because we need to show uh, what's going to happen in the transform track. The transform track basically dictates all the movement, scaling, and rotation of your prop. So to do that, let's just go over here to our current frame. We can also click and drag in this top area right here to change our frame. Let's change it to frame uh, 60 or something. We can also enter it in right here. If you want to enter like 70, for example, we can do that as well. What I'm going to do is just press the W hotkey uh, with my prop selected, press the W hotkey, and I'm going to click and drag my prop somewhere over here. And you can see that creates a keyframe in the timeline at frame 70. And it also creates this little arrow thing right here, this uh, key right here. This is part of the dope sheet, and we can talk about that in more advanced tutorials. But for now, you can see we just created our first animation. If I click and drag from here to here, we have that first animation. And I can press the space bar and play back. You can also use the play button right here and the stop button right here. But generally, just press the space bar on and off. That's the easiest way to play back. Now let's create a second animation right off the bat here. Let's go down to frame, say, 120 right here. And let's move this um, cube somewhere over here. So now we have a uh, three location animation, a three step animation. So if I press space and play back, you can see it goes a little faster between here and here because there's less distance. You can also click and drag those keyframes, you know, to make uh, less distance between them. So if I do that, it'll be faster between there and there. And that's basically how you dictate the speed of your, uh, you know, keyframe animations. Now you can also go from keyframe to keyframe using the tab key. If I select my first keyframe, I press tab, it'll automatically, the playhead will go to my second keyframe and third keyframe and so on and so forth. And you can press shift and tab to go back. Uh, shift and tab will take you uh, in reverse through all the separate keyframes. Super useful to know if you're you know, um, in a different part of your timeline. You can also use these buttons up here, but uh, previous key, add, uh, add key as well. If you wanted to add a keyframe for some reason, you can add a key as, uh, as well there and go to the next key. Now probably the most important thing you'll learn is zooming your timeline. Now you can do that through this uh, button right here. You can press the plus key, uh, minus key, control star or control asterisk and control slash for actual size. These ones are kind of useful, but generally myself, I just use the alt, hold down the alt key and scroll my mouse button down or up to zoom in and out of the timeline. That's really the easiest way to do things. So yeah, generally just use the uh, alt and the scroll mouse button. So let's talk now about transitions between the keyframes. Let's take this one back to about frame 50 or something. And this one will take down to like frame 100, just so we have an evenly spaced animation. So if we play back, you can see there's our evenly spaced animation. So what I'm going to do is click on this keyframe right here and right click on it. And we can select transition curve. Now in transition curve, I'm going to select custom for now so we can experiment with these different types of transitions. Now transition curve, if I select it on this keyframe, will be the transition curve between the previous keyframe and this one that I selected. So this will be the transition between here and here. So I'm going to select uh, ease in. 
Now you can see the curve here kind of is a little bit low, a little bit slow to start up, and then over here it, it gets uh, you know a bit more extreme. So it's kind of like an exponential curve where it gets a lot stronger as it progresses down the line there. Let's go ahead and press space and play this back and see how that affects our transition from point one to point two. Now you can see we get a lot more of a roop like that, and that corresponds with the curve that you see on this curve window right here. It starts off slow and then roop, gets a lot stronger as we go on. We can make that more extreme by using the slider as well. So it'll go roop, just like that, really fast, start off barely any movement, and then zoop, just zoom over there. And we can also use uh, ease out, for example, or ease in and ease out. Ease in and ease out will be like a very similar thing. It'll just, um, you know, start off slow and go very far in the middle, but there'll be a lot of action in the middle, and then it'll sort of ease out. So let's go ahead and play that back. So, and then you can see it slows down as it approaches the destination right there. So let's go ahead and try a two-step transition curve. Let's try it for this one right here. Make sure we have it selected. Let's select ease out. And as you can see, this one's going to kind of uh, ease off as it gets to closer to the destination. And then let's select this one right here. And let's select ease in. And what, what's going to happen here is we're basically going to uh, slow down to almost a stop at this point, maybe it almost is a stop. It'll stop for a few keyframes right here, and then we'll ease back out and return to normal speed. So we're kind of like we're stopping while we go around a corner. So you can see if I play back, we get a much more dynamic and natural looking animation. Now the reason I'm showing this is because even if you're a beginner animator, uh, even if you're a beginner animator, easing in and easing out is a very fundamental thing to learn. Uh, it makes your animations look a lot better in general. Um, if you don't want robotic linear animations, I generally recommend using these for most situations. Now that's about it for transform keyframe animations. What I'm going to do is take our cube back to uh, square one here, and we'll just close down our curve uh, window there. And if you want to remove all the animation from your uh, from your prop, you can simply right click it and select remove object animation. You can also right click it and select timeline to toggle your timeline on, but it's already on right here. Uh, just an aside there. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to talk about a few other tracks. I'm going to take out my transform track right now, uh, take out my collect clip track right now, and click on this button right here. And I'm going to open up my animation track, the animation layer track, and the visibility track. Now the constraint track, we cover that in link and attach. Uh, material, sound, and rigid state, uh, those are for their respective uh, topics, which we're going to talk about in separate tutorials. But in this tutorial, we're going to talk about animation, animation layer, and visibility. So let's get started on animation. Now this is created by using animation clips. You can right click on your on your prop. If it has any animation clips, those will be in here. Uh, this basic cube doesn't have any animation clips, so we won't uh, be able to add any for this one. But we can also go up here to our motion tab, select our prop puppet tool. And prop puppet is basically a tool that um, animates according to your mouse movement on the screen. So for example, we have move and horizontal movement selected. Now again, we're not going to go into too much detail in the prop puppet. I just want to show it to you. That'll be for a separate tutorial. But if I press space, I can preview a movement right here, and you can see my my mouse movement controls the movement on my cube. I can also uh, you know go back to frame one here on the timeline and select vertical movement. We can do the same thing like this. Now if I want to record something, we can just go ahead and press record and then press space, and I'll record a little bit of movement like this. Let's move it around like that. And you can see I created this uh, puppet clip. Let's hold the Alt key and scroll down to zoom out again. You can see I created this puppet clip here. And if I play back, oops, let's make sure we close the prop puppet down first. If I play back, you can see this is the animation that I created, just kind of following my random mouse movement all around there. Now I can uh, change the speed of this animation, uh, this clip right here, by going up here and toggling uh, speed. And I can click on the end and drag it to the very uh, close to the beginning there. And we'll speed it up a lot. If I, if I play back, you can see we just have a, like a buzzing thing right there. And I can also click and drag it uh, longer to make it uh, slower as well. So you can see the nice slow movement. In addition to that, I can also break this clip in half. So we start about here. If I just, you know, go to uh, somewhere like uh, here, for example, or uh, maybe somewhere like here. I can actually right click on the clip and select break. I'm just going to break that clip in half and delete the second part of it. So we can just select that second part and delete it. And now we only have this first part of the animation and it'll stop over here. 
We can also loop that clip by going uh, selecting the clip and selecting loop and then clicking and dragging on the end of it. Now because the ending and, and beginning positions of the clip were not the same, it won't really loop that well, I don't think. We can just play back and see. You can see it kind of has a little bit of a clipping right there where it's going back to the beginning position from here to here. So that doesn't really work too well, but I just wanted to show you the possibility of looping. And we'll talk about in other tutorials how you can create the perfect loopable uh, movement, uh, but that we don't have time for that in this tutorial. So let's just press Control Z and undo that. Let's keep this one right here. And let's talk about visibility next. So you can see the visibility track or visible track down here. And you can see we have a line through it, which means this uh, prop is constantly visible throughout this entire line right here. If we go over here, for example, and we wanted this prop to disappear, we can right click on our timeline and select on or off. And that'll take the visibility of my prop off. So here it's visible, here it's not. It suddenly just disappears right there. And then we can make it visible again at the end if we want by right clicking there and doing the same thing. Or we can go up here and just select on and off. And then you can see the keyframe right there to indicate the visibility. And then it continues to be visible off into infinity and beyond. So that's basically your visibility. Now the last thing we're going to talk about is the animation layer track. And this is very similar to the motion layer track that we're going to talk about in part two of this tutorial where we deal with characters. But let's just go ahead and we can just delete this cube because this cube doesn't have any bones in it. And we need bones to actually do some animation layer editing. So let's select this box and press delete and delete it. And let's go down to our props over here and we have some spring props somewhere. Uh, there we go. We have spring props right here. I'm going to just double click and add this antenna to my scene. And then I'm going to press the R hotkey and scale it up so we can see it a little bit better. So it's a little bit larger there. We can right click on this uh, prop and select remove object animation because we have some spring animation stuff going on there. But don't worry about that. What I'm going to do is in my modify panel, we need to make sure that we don't have spring uh, properties activated on this uh, prop, first of all, because if we have spring properties, so for example, if I go down here to the bottom, we see the spring, you can see spring activate is set to on. Let's set that to off because we won't be able to animate the bones if the spring stuff, if the spring properties are activated. So let's go down to the motion tab right here or up to the motion tab, I guess, select edit animation layer. And now let's see, we have the uh, antenna shown right here. What I can do is I can just go down here to, uh, you know, show or expand all. And then we can see all of these bones, all those little white uh, bones in our prop right here. And I can select each individual bone. For example, I can select this base one right here, press the E hotkey, and I can rotate that. And if I press F3 and go into my timeline, let's actually undo that. Let's press Control Z and undo that. Let's go to frame like a 20 or something in our timeline, and let's try and animate it uh, using the bone animation. So we can you know, do the same thing here. And you can see that creates a keyframe. We need to open up that animation layer track there so we can actually see that keyframe right there. And if we go down to frame 30, you know, we can uh, actually let's just go stay at frame 20 and we can select this bone, animate it this way, it kind of bends, take this one, animate it that way. So now we have this kind of weird animation. And then at frame maybe 40, we can, uh, you know, do the opposite thing. So let's select the, uh, the base one, the spring 001, rotate it that way. Spring 002, we'll rotate it that way, 03. So if you have props with bones, you can do this kind of funky stuff. And you can see we've created this kind of, you know, back and forth animation, almost like our antenna is dancing. And if we want, I can click on this keyframe right here that indicates this position. I can right click it and copy it and then maybe frame 60 down here I can go ahead right click and paste this keyframe and that'll paste all those positions for those bones that were at frame 20 previously so you can see there and there it's essentially the same but in between we have this blend like that so you can just go ahead and you know click and drag in the track in the animation layer track copy both of these keyframes you can see they're both selected and then go to frame 80 uh, 80 there we go and paste those and then we have this kind of you know shaking back and forth animation so again that's only possible with uh, props that have you know multiple bones like that 
Now, if I wanted to save that animation, say I spent you know so much time, like the 30 seconds I just spent on this animation, if I wanted to save that animation uh, and apply it to that same prop again, what I can do is I can click and drag in my collect clip track right here. So I can click and drag like this, and then I can right click and select add to perform. And what that'll do is we can uh, enter in a clip name now. So I can enter in like, you know, shake, shake that booty or something, I don't know. Uh, just press okay. And now we have this in the perform track. So if I close this down, close down my timeline, close down my tool and everything like that, if I right click on my tool or right click on my prop, select remove animation, I can right click on it again. And now I have this perform option and I have the option for my shake that booty motion. I can click that and it creates that motion right there. And if I press F3 and go into the timeline, now it's not in the animation layer track. However, I can open up and it's in the animation track, just like a clip that we had before. And I think I applied it at the wrong frame or something like that, but uh, we can always move it forward like that. And there's our shake that booty animation clip. And then we can, of course, you know, save that prop as, as a separate uh, custom prop and so on and so forth. But uh, that's how you can, you know, save animations for props. And that's about it for this tutorial. Essentially, I just wanted to kind of show you which tools correspond to which tracks in the timeline. Uh, give you your basic run through of the, of the timeline and, and some transform keyframe animation, easing in and easing out very important aspects of uh, any animator's uh, skill set. And uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com. You can also uh, check out our YouTube channel for more tutorials or uh, our help files. And you can email me at developer at reillusion.com. So thank you again for watching and stay tuned for part two of this tutorial where we talk about the character, the actor timeline components.